Got it. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters and all of you potential Toastmasters out there. Welcome to Wake Up With Toastmasters. My name is Ken Richardson. I am your District 115 Club Growth Director. And with me today is my co-host, <coughs> excuse me, a distinguished Toastmaster, past District Governor, Phyllis Trivi. How are you, Phyllis? I am sensational. And good morning, Ken. And good morning to our public out there. Don't forget, send us an e a text or whatever on Facebook. Let us know you're out there. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, yeah, we are live on Facebook, and you are encouraged to send us questions. Uh, join us on our Facebook page. It's tmd115cgd slash facebook.com. Uh, and you know, put in a question or so, because today we're going to be talking about building teams in the area and the division. We've talked in the past about the uh, election process. And this kind of goes along with that. What do you do when you are elected or appointed as an area director and elected as a division director? What can you do? What are some tips to build your team? We'll take a look at the ideal structure, <laughs> which is, it's an ideal. It's a, from, from TI, some of the stuff that they've put together. Uh, and we'll talk about whether or not it's achievable, realistic, uh, and uh, something that our teams will want to do. And I want to remind our viewers that we still need some area directors. We'd love to have you step up to district leadership. And if you are interested, please send me an email, d115cgd at gmail.com, and I will forward it to our district leadership council and we will get you set up. Phyllis, I know you and I have talked in the past that being an area director is one of your most favorite things. Mine too, because you're so close to the clubs, you're right there. What do you think about uh, team building within your area if you are the area director? Well, first I wanna say that we don't just do it once. If you want to do it again, that's great. We would love to have you. You know, Jesse Oakley, who's now running for regional director, three times he's done area director. So it's possible to go ahead and do it again. So don't think that we're not talking to you if you've been there and done that. Please come forward and be an area director. Use all those skills that you have learned since you were an area director to help our clubs to be distinguished. I have found that if I'm working on a committee, I know who's supposed to be on it. You know, the president, the VP of Ed, the VP of membership. But a lot of times those are not the people or the drivers that are in your clubs. So I would say invite everybody just to be sure that your council meeting has representation from every club. Yeah, I think that's a good point because we're gonna look at what the recommendation is from TI, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I agree with you. You wanna welcome anyone who's interested in putting some time on the committee. And there are certainly tasks that they can, they can help you with. And we're gonna take a look at this. So why don't we, pull up the PowerPoint. And I have to say, this is TI's PowerPoint. <laughs> uh, so we'll hold on a second here. Let me get going. Sharing my screen. And here we go. All righty then. <clears throat> Area and division directors developing a successful team. Here are some pointers. Now keep in mind, there are tons of articles and books on there about team building. What we wanna focus on now are some of the tips. They're not exhaustive, certainly. These are the tips that TI put together, but there are others that you can incorporate into this basic model that we're gonna take a look at. So the first thing we want to take, well, what are we going to cover? Well, we're going to talk about those team members. 
as Phyllis indicated, there, uh, there are recommended positions. We'll look at the VPE, the presidents, the VPMs, those kinds of positions as your team members, but have an open mind because you may have other people who are interested in serving. And it's a great way to uh, create future leaders is to have them serve on your team. We'll talk about your team agreement and why you really should have an agreement. Much of what we talk about in a uh, uh, area team or division team is pretty much spoken or not really in writing. I think having something written and going through uh, an exercise much like there's a, we talked about the club success plan. There's an area success plan and a division success plan. And you can incorporate that in one of your meetings to develop it together early on in your process so that everyone knows where we are, what the rules are going to be, and where we are going, what we want to achieve. We'll talk about team motivation. Motivation is a hot topic these days. And again, there are lots and lots of books and articles on motivation, but we're going to talk about some of the key uh, elements of motivation for your team. Not again, not exhaustive, but what keeps people motivated? Why do you stay in Toastmasters and what would motivate you to move up to leadership? <coughs> we'll talk about conflict resolution. Anytime more than two people, two, two or more people get together, there's always the potential for conflicts. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And our objectives then will be first to review the roles of the area and division director, identify members of the team, the councils, the different councils, the area council and the division council, because that is the, the official name of the teams that support respectively the area director and the division director. We're going to talk about the team charter, which is the equivalent of the uh, uh, sort of the team success plan. And because there are elements that we'll, we'll flesh out specifically, but then they merge nicely with our previous discussion on club success plans and some of the elements that are important to get the most out of it. <coughs> Excuse me. And then build trust and set expectation using those team charters, apply the five principles of motivation. And I think I have one more here. Use conflict resolution. What do you think? Fill us anything we need to add to this? That looks like a lot to cover in our amount of time, Ken. Are we going to run over again? <laughs> the, yes. Let's start in and see how we do, but I, I wouldn't want to add anything to our list. I think that everything about the area director. It's quite an director. ambitious list, so let's get into it. Yeah, can be yeah. covered here. It's yeah. going to be challenging, but you know we're going to try and stick to our schedule. <laughs> so let's talk first about the area director, and then we'll move into the division director. Now, <clears throat> if you read the leadership district leadership handbook and i know everybody loves that it's something that'll put you to sleep no i'm just kidding there's a lot of good information in there but it can be overwhelming but they have a recommended structure for the area director's team and this is it uh, you have your area director who serves as the chairperson or the leader of the team or the committee chair then they have a position for an area secretary. Now that's nice. If you can have, we're talking about other positions that you might try to fill, an area secretary would be great. <coughs> then, pardon me, I've got him coming out for a little bit of a cold here. Uh, and then if you uh, look at the recommended composition of the rest of the team, it should be the club president from all of the clubs in your area, in our area, each area has four clubs. So that would be four club presidents, the VPE from each of those clubs, and the VPN from each of those clubs. So this can get to be a, a fairly large, substantial committee. And then there are a couple of 
additional spots that TI has recommended, the assistant area director for program quality and the assistant area director for club growth. What do you think about this structure, uh, Phyllis? Is this a little bit much or is it not There you enough? go. I, I <laughs> think that is a little bit <coughs> much. You know, Toastmasters thinks about what is ideal. We are out in the public, we are working with the team and we have to think about what we can accomplish. And if you can get three members, any three members from every club, I think that is tremendous. You're more than likely to get two members from one club, three members from another, one member from another. It's never gonna be equal. And to have a quality, program quality, area director, you know, this would be great, but where do you find those people? That's, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Yeah, this would be tremendous, but, but I'm looking at my club, which is trying to grow and being sure that there's a program quality director. Well, I kind of think that program quality director is part of the area director's job. And, you know, maybe an assistant would be nice, but I think that the area director kind of would be visiting her clubs or his clubs to be sure that their program is quality and that it is working well and that everything is following the protocol of Toastmasters International. With our program, we have a lot of lead way but there are certain things that must be done every time. And I think it's up to the area director to visit her clubs to be sure that that's happening. So yeah, these are ideal positions, but I don't see them happening. Well, I think you're right. It is a, uh, these are, this is an ideal model. And, you know, part of that ideal would be that every club would have 20 or more members right and we would be all following the uh, club success plan and the dcp but that may be a little unrealistic we're going to have some who do and some who don't but this structure if we had the volunteers would be great and it would oh, give okay. the area director a lot more flexibility in terms of how can we support our clubs so let's go on a little bit and talk about <clears throat> the division director, and we'll see something a little bit similar. Mm -hmm. At the division level, all of the area directors serve as the team, the committee, the council, whatever you want to call it, for the division director. So you have, in our case, this is correct, four area directors. But then here again, they also have a couple of positions that we don't I can't ever recall uh, seeing filled uh, in our district and in District 33 when we were part of that, the Assistant Division Director for Program Quality and the Assistant Division Director for Club Growth. Again, this looks like an ideal structure, but it may be and probably is a bit of an unrealistic structure. What do you think, Phyllis? Is that uh, accurately describe what we were talking yeah. about here? It is ideal, but what I'm thinking is that maybe they do not have their own assistant, but that at each council meeting or each committee meeting, whenever the director, the vision director has a meeting with his area directors, he should invite those people from the district. So the district uh, club growth director, and the district program quality director so that they can put forth their ideas personally to those area directors through the division director to help them grow. You know, I think that's a wonderful idea. And, and you were talking earlier about you can be an area director more than once. Oh, <clears throat> it's like, uh, I feel that really, uh, Tremendously, because I feel like since I've been in district leadership, I've learned so much more about what I could have done better, you know, how I could have improved my time as an area director. 
So that's that's one of the advantages of that position is that you can go back and implement strategies that you've learned since your first time around. And I think that's incredibly helpful. So I'm, I'm with you, that, that works great. But again, you're right, if you can, uh, I like the idea of inviting the club growth director for the, for the district and the program quality director to your division meetings, because I think that helps uh, not only to show support, but to get ideas uh, for, uh, you know, coming from the area directors who are close to the clubs, what is it that our clubs need? What do they want from district leadership? So that's a terrific, terrific suggestion. Now then, in terms of team support, you put this all together. And if you look on the right side, you see there's the structure for the division director. And that ties directly to the structure we looked at for the area director. So there is support for what's happening at the area level through the division team. And then really all, it's not shown on here, but through the district leadership team, including the trio. So this gives you the layout of how would it work in a real world <laughs> or in an ideal world, I should say, not the real world. Ideal. <laughs> an ideal world because the real world doesn't always reflect the way we would like it to be. So now that we've looked at this ideal structure uh, and encourage our area directors and division directors to approximate it and to build their team with this structure in mind, let's take a look at things like the team charter. One of the things you want to say is, well, what should the team composition be? We've talked about that a little bit and recognize that it may be more or should be more than what TI recommends. Just because it says the at the area level, the, the president and VPE and VPM, you don't have to stop there. Anyone who is interested could be part of your team. And that's a great way to get them introduced into district leadership and prepare them for future leadership roles. Any uh, comments about that, fellas? I think that's good to go. All righty. What are the values of the team? And we talked a little bit about this when we were, well, we talked actually a lot about it when we were talking about the club success plan. <clears throat> and we talked about TI's core values. That's right. Uh, that relates to your team as well. And it's always good to define them like integrity and respect and service and excellence. And those kinds of things uh, are part of your consideration. And it may seem, well, we don't need to include that. We, we talk about it all the time. But really, we do need to talk about it because the more we talk about it, it becomes part of our culture. And more than just talking about it, we need to make sure that we are applying those values to how we conduct uh, our team. <clears throat> team operating principles, some of the things that we talked about there again. And I'm hoping on that our audience sees how this ties back to the club success plan, because where we're working toward is getting to the area and division success plan, because all of these concepts can be wrapped into that with your team charter. But your team operating principles would include things like, how often do we meet? Where do we meet? Is it gonna be online, in person? Uh, who's going to, to make the agenda, uh, just how are we going to conduct ourselves? So it's not dissimilar from uh, any operating guidelines that you might have in a business environment, right, Phyllis? Correct. And yeah, uh, where you have your meeting, I think sometimes makes a big difference too. And the time of day. Uh, when I was division governor, I had the meetings at my home with snacks and drinks. <laughs> and occasionally at one time I had people stay over six hours. Not that we talked about business, but you know, it was just a fun time. So we yeah. talked about what needed to be done and then had fun together. Absolutely. You can you can conduct business and still have fun. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you can put that in your operating principles. <laughs> 
Uh, what are the potential obstacles? What are some of the obstacles you can think of? If you're put, if you're, let's focus first on the area. And the area has a team together uh, and they have a plan going forward. What do you think are some of the obstacles they might encounter? What, from your experience, can you think about that? So you're always going to have some people that say, oh, I don't want to go to another meeting. I'm not interested in another meeting. Or you have the ones that no matter what time of day you set your meeting, you can't get everybody to agree on it. And there's always the workload. Someone, you know, has to work, has say, both of my sons work overnight. One works evenings, one's worked overnight. So it's difficult to get the day workers and the overnight workers and the evening workers all into a meeting. And then by Las Vegas being 24 hours, seven days a week, you have people with various times off. So their days off are not the same. So you just, you run into obstacles. And that's why I'm saying that it's, you know, you get the representation you can get, not necessarily president, VP of education and membership. You get who'll come that's available at the time. Yeah, and I think it's great to identify what those obstacles are because it, it, it increases your awareness mm -hmm. and you can identify potential strategies to deal with those obstacles. Um, not everything is going to go according to plan, but identifying those obstacles and uh, having a strategy in general about how the, the team is going to operate will help you overcome those as, as best you can or develop workarounds. What's the meeting protocol? How are we going to conduct these meetings? Now, TI says, um, in the, I think it's in the Constitution and bylaws, that the default is, is Robert's rules, and I think that's appropriate. Uh, <clears throat> you need to have a meeting protocol to make sure that things get done. That's why the agenda and team minutes are so important. Uh, I've been on teams where <clears throat> the minutes were produced and then pretty much ignored. <laughs> and that's not really helpful when you try to accomplish the goal. What the minutes are there to not only document what occurred at a given meeting, but also to look back and say, oh, we need to follow up on this particular item. So, you know, something that was covered in the previous sets of minutes becomes unfinished business in your next agenda. <clears throat> and I've seen, pardon me, I'm having coughing and sneezing and just going crazy today. You know if allergies or what, but a slight cold. So bear with me, I apologize. But you're going to have issues that can best be addressed using a version of parliamentary procedures uh, like Robert's rules that will help you stay on track. And that's one of the biggest things that I've seen go awry in teams that have relatively inexperienced leaders. And that's where mentorship comes in. If you have been an area director or a division director, you can do a lot of good by mentoring your successor along the way and helping them overcome this. Also, attending our upcoming upcoming uh, district officer training. You'll learn some of these tools and techniques. <clears throat> Team interaction, behavioral norms, these kinds of things. We're gonna talk in a moment about the fact that there's always the potential for conflict. How do we deal with it? And then of course, the area and success and division success plans that encompass all of these concepts as you work through the written plan. Uh, team motivation. <clears throat> motivation is a toughie, but the, the and there are, as I said, tons of articles and books. But let's look at five principles of motivation that you can incorporate into all of your team building efforts. One is understanding motivation. What motivates an individual is not always the same as what you think it might be. We talk about incentives as providing some motivation, but what incentives are gonna actually motivate individuals? For some, it might be recognition. 
For others, it might be some sort of monetary award or <clears throat> TI bucks or gift certificates. You need to understand what motivates your team members. And this is simply a matter of getting to know them and talking to them about uh, recognition and motivation and rewards. Focusing on the value. What is the value that this team brings to the clubs in the area or the division or to TI and District 115 overall? Value can be a very strong motivation. Making your club the best it can be, having, you know, reaching presidents distinguished or, or uh, distinguished or better. <clears throat> and the same for the um, district, I mean, at the area and division. Clarifying those expectations. And that goes back to what we were talking about before, writing out the team's goals and objectives as part of the success plan uh, clarifies those expectations. So everybody knows what our goal is and what's expected of them, what their role is on the team. Recognizing the team, like you said, having a little party, uh, your Meetings were not only about meetings, but they were about building relationships and celebrating the accomplishments of your team. So team recognition is very, very important and leading by example. If you give lip service to the principles and values of your team, but then you don't live those principles and values, that's going to show and the team is going to see that. Uh, what do you think about these five principles? Uh, what would you add, Phyllis? Well, focusing on value, I believe that when people get together, they do actually motivate one another just by being together because they will talk about the great things that are going on. They will ask questions. And so you get ideas from one another. And I think that's the greatest thing uh, to help motivate people is, you know, that club's successful. Let's go see what they're doing. How do they conduct themselves? What do they got to say at our meeting if questions are asked and get ideas from one another? And I think that's the greatest thing about getting together as a group. Absolutely. Sharing uh, ideas and building better clubs. Okay, a conflict resolution. We're going to run through this a little more quickly. Uh, if a conflict arises, you need to talk privately about the, the folks who are in conflict and share responsibility. Say, okay, I may be just as much at fault. Let's work to resolve this issue. Uh, present your view viewpoint in an unemotional way. Don't get defensive or overly aggressive try and work through it unemotionally so that the focus is on resolving the problem, not attacking each other. Determine the points of agreement and disagreement and decide how to proceed on disagreements. You may need to have an unbiased third party that can help you sort of mediate some of these disagreements and then summarize the discussion in writing and move forward. Uh, what do you think? Does this provide us with what we need to at least uh, start the discussion on conflict resolution. Talk in private has to be the best one. If that doesn't work out, um, then, you know, you can work at getting, getting resolved. But talking in private usually does the trick. It's like, how many people are going to agree with the person that you're having problems with? But always you want to summarize everything in writing and move forward. It's possible that this person will no longer be part of the team. And that's, you know, that's just how it is. They can't be destruct destructive in your meetings or, uh, you know, always take issues with everything that the group has to say. So be prepared for that. If we can't make a dis change or a, just a person that will accept what's going on, the group rules. That's always been our idea is the group rules. 
And yes, and I think if you if the leader doesn't address the res the conflict, uh, it can just fester, and it can really impact in a negative way uh, the rest of the group. Some people will become frustrated because they'll see they'll know this underlying tension is there, and it will cause them to leave the team. So. Uh, a lot of us are conflict averse. I consider myself part of that uh, label. <clears throat> I don't like conflict, but it has to be addressed in a diplomatic way, as you said, privately come to a resolution because of its negative impact on the team. <clears throat> so in conclusion, <clears throat> excuse me, area and division directors have many responsibilities. We know that, we love them, we appreciate all that they do. Uh, the councils help uh, uh, take some of the workload, spread the workload, generate new ideas, and build efficiency. Team charters help uh, to be effective and productive. And good team leaders employ the five principles we talked about in motivation. And resolving conflict allows teams to be more productive. I'm going to stop sharing here. As we have gotten through, we are a little bit behind, only one minute over. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think these are important concepts that we need to talk about. And if our viewers or listeners have any questions or comments themselves, please feel free to email me at d115cgd at gmail.com. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, come talk about your club. Come talk about your Toastmasters journey. There are many things that you can share that could help others with their journey. So join us where Wake Up With Toastmasters is on five days a week, Monday through Friday. The hosts may change, but the principles are the same. Any final remarks, Phyllis, on our topic today or anything you'd like to say to our viewers? Uh, again, just to reiterate, you can do this job more than once. And while I was the district director, Pat Johnson, was the international president and talk about doing it again she is actually a region advisor <clears throat> so no matter how high you've reached in toastmasters you can do lesser jobs and again and again well i agree with you it's <clears throat> excuse me and as i said earlier now that i've been an area director and division director i feel like i'd be you know, very happy to go back and do that role again, because now I've learned so much about leadership over the years. I want to acknowledge Carol, who says thank you for the good ideas. And Jennifer, thank you for joining us. Again, uh, if you have any questions, send us an email and we will be back. Or Phyllis, actually, I'm going to be out of town. So Phyllis is going to be hosting on Thursday. Who's your guest on Thursday, Phyllis? Okay, Katie Porter from District 33. She is a past district director and of course a DTM. And I wanna to talk to her about starting clubs because I know that she started and I'm thinking more than 10 personally. So she's been involved. So that should be interesting. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Katie's a lovely lady. She was the district director when I was a division governor. Of course, at the time, it was district governor. So uh, I'll, I'll be back hopefully next Tuesday if my internet works right. <laughs> so we'll see you then. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Hold on here. Let me get the right button. There we go.